I think one reason that boys have so few platonic relationships with girls is because boys are supposed to do this thing and girls are supposed to do this thing. Then how do they relate? They relate as either sexualized creatures or they relate in an unfair and unequal power dynamic. Hi, my name is Joshua David Stein. I'm the editor at large at Fatherly. Welcome to the Fatherly Book Club. Now this week for Boys Week, we wanted to look at books that either enforce or challenge traditional gender stereotypes. The reason why it's interesting to us and to me personally is as raising two boys, I wonder how do they understand what being a boy is? What activities belong to boys? What activities belong to girls? First, we're gonna take a look at two books which I think do the wrong thing. They're called The Girl's Book of Adventure and The Boy's Book for Adventure. Now, these belong to a genre of books that are either for girls or boys, such as Girls Only, How to Survive Almost Anything, Boys Only, How to Survive Almost Anything. But what if we focus not on surviving a segregated society, but creating one with gender equality? Yeah. These two books came out in 2013, and they belong to a genre of books which separate the world into boys only and girls only. Let's take a look at the girls' book of adventure. Beauty! In both summer and winter, your skin needs protection and pampering. How to make a long necklace. And even, and presuming this is for young girls, how to make a unique harem pants. Now I challenge you to describe to an 11 year old girl what a harem is and why she has to wear harem pants. Moving on to the boys book of adventure. Well, it appears what's uniquely for boys is things like secret codes, making a bow and having a little kid dressed up as a Native American and poisonous snakes. And of course that's only for boys because you don't want little girls knowing what a poisonous snake is. By that same token, what, I, what really gets my goat is besides like how to make homemade potpourri, things like herbal and wellness teas, which frankly boys should also know how to make herbal and wellness teas. This whole genre of books is further reinforcing insidious gender stereotypes which are only harming our boys and girls. So what else is out there? Is it all doom and gloom, boys clubs and girls with fairy headdresses? No. There's two books that I want to highlight which I'm, I think do a wonderful job. So this isn't the most recent book, it came out in 2015, but I think it's one of the best. It's by a guy named Keith Negley who came out with an earlier book which I think is wonderful called My Dad Used to Be Cool, which as a dad who used to be cool I really relate to. And it's called Tough Guys and then parenthetically Have Feelings Too. This is a book I read my son often and um, I think he relates to. It talks about things that I can't talk to him directly and it's about sensitivity and letting your feelings show. Anyway, it's called Tough Guys and it's a very simple book. It's great, I would say, for three to five, up to seven. Uh, it's not always easy being a tough guy, so you, you might not think it, but tough guys have feelings too. And the whole book is just about traditionally masculine superheroes and tough guys just feeling. And even like a biker with tattoos staring at a dead squirrel and crying at the sanctity and impermanence of life. And my favorite part is at the end, it really brings it back home to being in bed with your son and just reading him these books. Now here's another wonderful book called Kate Who Tamed the Wind. What I love about this book is it depicts competency on the part of a young woman, frailty on the part of a young man, and how you can build a platonic relationship between those two people. So Kate Who Tamed the Wind is about an old man in isolation who lives on a creaky house on the top of a hill his boxers blow away from the hill. He's up there alone, has no one to share his tea with, his tea spills. Tea, which by the way, he would never know how to make if we were living by the rules of this book. And the wind blows and his hat goes. And then we meet Kate, who's playing hopscotch, catches a hat, and she figures out how the wind works and she works her way up to the top of the hill to plant trees all around him. The reason she's planting trees is so they form a barrier, but also so they form community. And then they're friends. And then look, he's preparing the food, he's making the tea, and they're sheltered. And the person who brought that shelter and brought the seeds, who knows about horticulture and agriculture and wind patterns, is a young girl named Kate. 
There are books to avoid and there's books to encourage. And these two books are two wonderful books to encourage to raise not only boys who are in touch with their vulnerability and not only girls who are encouraged to head into the sciences, but for girls to see that boys can be tough guys and for boys to see that girls can be competent and are competent and will more than likely save their ass when they get older. So this is a book club and book clubs are interactive. So what I want you guys to do if you want but whatever, I don't care, do it. I'm just uncomfortable saying that I want something and that I'll be hurt if you don't, is to leave comments on books that you think are really great for your little boys and girls and books that you think further perpetuate negative stereotypes. Um, and I'll meet you back here at the Fatherly Book Club in due time. Good night.